Not everybody is high on the new dope proposal. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. So I was in the State House the other night after the State of the State uh, doing my normal networking and saying hello and seeing who wants to say what to you about the State of the State and uh, bumped into a handful of mayors, a couple of which were grumbling about the marijuana proposal and one of them is here tonight, Joe Policina, no stranger to this broadcast or to the people of Johnston. Very, very strong thoughts on the marijuana proposal, and he's here this evening to talk about it. Great to have you in. Thank you very much for tuning in. Let's jump into everything. Here's the headline that is grabbing a lot of attention today. So this, know this now. We tape this broadcast, full transparency, in the afternoons at 1 o'clock. This just came down the pike. The president wrote Nancy Pelosi a letter. Let me just uh, reach, it literally is on my phone as we speak. Uh, Dear Madam Speaker, thank you for your letter, which is the original letter, January 3rd, uh, offering me, I'm paraphrasing, to come to the State of the Union and or come to the House to address the, the, the Congress and the State of the Union. Uh, then you followed up with a letter on the 16th expressing your concern based on the shutdown and security. And accordingly, uh, we have checked Homeland Security and see no concerns. Therefore, I'm honoring your invitation, meaning the original, and I'm coming. I look forward to seeing you on the evening of the 29th in the chamber of the House of Representatives. It would be so very sad for our country if the State of the Union were not delivered on time, on schedule, and very importantly, on location. Now, you see this at 7.30 or midnight, and uh, there's six hours that are going to pass between the time that I'm talking to the camera and you're seeing me. I don't know whether Nancy Pelosi will react immediately, whether she'll sit this one out. It'd be, run to run, it'd be fun to run a pool, though, uh, uh, on this. Uh, all I can say is that she's a tough cookie, and she's not going to fold like a wilted lily on this. Uh, will the shutdown, you know, be the bargaining chip and take the shutdown bargaining chip away from the actual wall DACA negotiations? I'm guessing that she'll go at least a 24-hour cycle with that. Uh, I don't think she's going to. So if you're seeing this at 7.30 midnight, my guess is that she has not yet responded uh, one way or the other. Then again, what do I know? All righty, uh, interesting. This headline, of course, in, in Newport County, very tough for, for people at zero degrees. Holy moly. Uh, this was one of the more recent stories Eyewitness News put together on it. Many homes and businesses in Newport are in the cold for a second night after a gas supply issue left nearly 7,000 customers in Newport and Middletown without gas service. So basically we have no heat, uh, but we do have fireplaces and we've been using them just to sort of pull that chill, that horrible chill out of the air. Elizabeth Brooks, one of many residents toughing it out, though National Grid is offering free hotel rooms and Governor Gina Raimondo is urging residents to leave their frigid homes. The number one message is get to warm shelter. I have a lot of very comfy, cozy puffs and um, a warm nightgown and I have I'll pack a socks for my feet. Jane Hens also says she's staying home with some space heaters, though she has a backup plan. I have wonderful neighbors, some of whom have oil heat, and so they have um, offered that I could be there or spend the night there. National Grid says the problem was a depressurized line from supplier Algonquin, which is now fixed, but they have to go door to door turning every gas meter off before they repressurize the line and restore gas service to all the homes. So if they can't reach a customer by phone, they're doing this using a locksmith supervised by police to get inside. That's a safety. We've got to get them all turned off before we can relight it. That is critical. So that was earlier in the day yesterday, Tim Horn, the president of National Grid, who later uh, went to the hospital and then I believe was released, thankfully. I'm wishing him all the best, as I'm sure everybody is. Uh, this one may have just run him down. Maybe it was, by the way, you know what? I don't know what the diagnosis is, and I, I'm not going to do it on television, and I'm not a doctor, and I did not stay at the Holiday Inn Express last night. But I will tell you, one of the things about the cold weather is that people don't hydrate because you're just not inclined to drink a lot of water. Uh, you should stay hydrated in the cold because 
it's important to do that no matter what the temperature. Anyway, uh, look, I don't have any any real thought about this crisis other than things happen, and it seems like National Grid most likely got ahead of what could have been a big emergency. So inconvenience, I think the governor's response was on the money on this. I think the local mayor response was on the money on this. But here's my problem. National Grid, PU, when it comes to consistency on outreach, it happens too often with National Grid. The governor and the mayor of Newport suggested that for people who could not put down credit cards or pay in advance cash for hotel rooms, they were urging, get to the hotel rooms, said that there'd be vouchers available for those who could not or would not do that. National Grid never posted on their website the information about the vouchers. And when we called the customer service line on the radio show, uh, off the air, but for the radio show yesterday, the customer service representative told us that it was uh, bad information that had been reported that there were no such thing as a voucher program. Okay? Then I talked to the mayor of Newport about this and she conceded that there was disparate information coming from the governor and the mayor about these vouchers versus what National Grid was doing. Reportedly the truth is, and all the media has been kind of like clueless about this discrepancy, that they did have vouchers at the middle school there, the Gaudet Middle School, uh, and I guess National Grid just didn't want to get in front of that, which is terrible. I mean, that's the kind of thing that actually pulls back from the good work that you're doing and trying to get everybody safe. Uh, make sure you're still checking in on your neighbors. We're over the hump when it comes to the cold, 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 but we're not over the hump when it comes to getting everybody restored. And don't get cocky about, you know, 28 degrees at night uh, because that's, you know, I got a nurse on the set who's nodding his head. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. Be careful out there and help each other. But you know, National Grid, get your act together, will you please? Uh, I, I, no criticism about what happened, but how you handle the public relations end and the customer service thing, oof. All right, um, here's the headline that is the inspiration for our conversation this evening, and that is that uh, marijuana could be on the agenda here. I'm going to throw Jess an audible and go right to our guest, if that's possible, to uh, get into this, because I, I want to get in sooner than later. Uh, we'll give you some background on the budget coming up here in, in, in the next segment. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you for having me on. You agree with me. Don't get, don't get, uh, don't get comfortable about 40 degree temperatures, right? Frostbite can happen in temperatures above 32 degrees, right. above 40 degrees, so they have to be careful. And uh, National Grid and I are not on speaking terms because we won that case with the streetlights. So mm. I do feel bad for those people. They have to, obviously, hopefully the neighbors will come together. And, uh, but put you yourself in the same spot it could have happened in Johnston. Oh, absolutely. You want to be on the same page as them on a PR basis. Absolutely. Don't, the, 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 the elected official in good faith is saying, hey, listen, we've got vouchers for people. By the way, not everybody carries a credit card. Not everybody wants to no. put down cash over like three, four, five, six hundred dollars. a lot of money. Absolutely. You know, if people are needed. And by the way, what was the criteria? They didn't know. So did you have to say, hey, listen, I'm broke. I need a voucher. Right. Why, why do people have to be put in that spot? Um, it should have been automatic that National Grid will put, will put you up because that, obviously they cause the inconvenience. Well, they suggested that they, they put you up, but they want you to put down, you know, pay for it and then be, be being reimbursed. Uh, <laughs> most people are being re going to be reimbursed sure. with their, uh, you know, with the paperwork that, that you'll send in with receipts. Uh, but for those who can't do it, I, I it's just, you know, get, get consistent. Anyway, um, give me your headline on this proposal for recreational marijuana being uh, in, uh, being introduced in the budget, and then we'll, then we'll dig into sure. it. Sure. So let me just preface my remarks by saying I was probably one of the first uh, senators when I was a senator. I signed on. It was Rhoda Perry, Senator Perry and myself. It was called the Edward O. Hawkins uh, Medical Marijuana Bill. I believe in medical marijuana, absolutely, but I don't believe in uh, legalizing marijuana for recreational purposes. Now, that, that comes along with my experience. Uh, 21 and a half years as a, uh, a firefighter, uh, 18 years on rescue, as well as a registered nurse since 1985. Uh, if you talk to most uh, uh, drug counselors, they'll tell you that marijuana is a, uh, obviously a gateway drug. And we're all up in arms about uh, opioid, uh, the opioid crisis, and we should be, by the way. And now they want to legalize one drug because it's, it, to me, unfortunately, it's ABC, all about cash. And to me, that's not, it's not worth it going no, down that road. No, 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 this is not about it, money at all. No, it, well. No. Yeah, yeah I think it Ask is. Ask the governor. Well, the governor says this is not about money at all. This is about keeping people safe 
And you know, listen, there's a legitimacy to the conversation about the squeeze between Massachusetts and Connecticut. And here we are not playing ball and folks crossing the line with, with purchased marijuana. And I mean, I, I, I'm ready to hear that argument, but the idea that it's not about money at all. She put 16 gross million dollars into the budget and six and a half cash flow. Uh, well, you know, there's two, Dan, there's other, other issues. I mean, I've spoken to other mayors, and, and I liked what the Senate president said and what the speaker said. You know, you've got to look at other things. For instance, what happens if one of my, and I've got a great DPW, but one of my DPW uh, workers are driving a big Mack truck, dump truck with a plow on it, and they happen to smoke marijuana maybe an hour or two before they came to work, and God forbid they kill somebody. I mean, if the state wants to pass it, the state should really look at indemnifying the cities and towns. Or, because what happens, will, will the, we're insured under the interlocal trust, the town of Johnston. Will they still cover us? Will our rates go up? Will my own personal insurance go up? Because from what I've read, and I don't believe everything I see online, because there's <laughs> some crazy stuff really? online. Really, it's amazing. And w what I've read is that, in, 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 and I somewhat believe it, on, thi on this aspect, that the fatalities in, in Colorado have gone up over 40 percent since they've legalized marijuana. So there's no immediate test, um, unlike if you do a sobriety test or someone stopped for alcohol. And I just think it just sends the bad message. Just because Massachusetts is doing it, why should we? Okay, that's uh, a little bit more than a headline, but we're digging into some of the issues. We'll uh, elaborate and show you some more aspects of the state budget as well. Stay with us. Just to give you a little context, here was the eyewitness news summary on the budget, including this marijuana conversation. The ways your wallet could be affected by Governor Gina Raimondo's budget plan, your Netflix bill could go up. The governor is proposing to extend the 7% sales tax to digital video, music, and ebooks that you download or stream. If you're into betting on sports, you'll be able to do it from the comfort of your couch if Raimondo's plan for mobile sports gaming goes through. Recreational marijuana would become legal under her plan with a new Office of Cannabis Regulation to oversee it. Her plan also adds six medical marijuana compassion centers and cracks down on medical home growing, limiting which patients will be allowed to grow and cutting the allowed plant count in half. One of the things that we really anticipate is greater access to medicine because we're increasing the number of compassion centers, so we should have a greater variety of medicine available to patients at a lower cost. Broad-based taxes would not go up under Raimondo's plan, though she is proposing to raise the cigarette tax. She also wants to raise the minimum wage. Plus, she proposes to cut the car tax again, though not by as much as the original phase-out law called for next year. Her plan would still get rid of the car tax entirely by 2023. The chairman of the House Finance Committee, Marvin Abney, giving this cautious initial assessment tonight. Quote, we have just received the budget, and it looks like there are a lot of new fees and taxes to go along with the new programs. The House Finance Committee will ensure that all of these proposals receive a thorough vetting with ample opportunity for feedback from all of those impacted by them. So that's Steph Machado. Thanks, Steph. So that that's uh, that gives you perspective on the total budget. But you know, you gave one of these while you were watching it the, the, with the with the marijuana situation. Mm -hmm. The idea that they're kind of re-engineering the availability of even medical marijuana again uh, negates this notion that it's not about the money because now people who are growing on a pretty regular basis can't grow and have to buy. You think that's going to happen? If they can beat the taxes, they're still going to grow. If, they, if Obviously, if they, if they, if they have marijuana, mar marijuana on them, they can say, hey, I bought this legally. I mean, I just look at the different aspects of what, you can, what, you, what we'll see. Um, you know, if they can beat the government when it comes to taxes, people are going to do it. It's human nature. So if they can grow it in their basements, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. We changed all. The, we have Johnston water system. We have about 1,800 meters water meters that we had to change. We just got through changing, and there were a few people who wouldn't let us in their house, and the reason being is they were growing pot downstairs. Um, we finally got in because we threatened to shut the water off, and obviously they, re they removed that. So there's a lot of people out there. Now, I'm not saying they should legalize it. I just think that it's going to be a big problem in society, so to speak, and, and I've spoken to several police chiefs. They're vehemently opposed to it, so I'm just hoping that um, cooler heads prevail. You know, it's so funny that you mentioned that the people didn't want, them, uh, in, didn't want the town in the house. With this gas thing in Newport, mm -hmm. I was only half joking on the air that this notion that if they couldn't find you, they were gonna they were gonna bust in to to shut off your meter. There are a lot of people that may not have wanted that to happen. I'm sure. I wonder what the legal issues are surrounding your your criminal liability for 
growing, you know, or I mean, I mean, if you got a meth lab, uh, you know, you're in trouble, right? But I wonder, even in your town, in that situation, what would have been the, what would have been the criminal prosecutorial option for the town if you were in for one reason and saw that, well, or, you know, while I, you were there? I would assume that they would have notified the police, and the police would have done their investigation, and then obviously, not being being a nurse, not a, an attorney, it would be up to our legal department to yeah, prosecute. Yeah, I'm not sure that uh, it'd be really interesting no, because absolutely. when the town is demanding that it enter. Anyway, uh, lawyers uh, uh, could handle that situation as they go. Overall, this plan for recreational marijuana is being received how by the mezzanine layer of government, like I call it, which has been very effective in the last 10 years, and that is the mayoralty. Are you a, are you a lone wolf? Are, are they with you? What's going on? I, I would say probably most of the mayors uh, agree with me. that They see it as an issue, a liability issue. Um, they see it as an issue what happens to their insurance rates. Uh, I look at it from a different perspective also because in, in 1987 I found, I ha have a younger brother, I found him dead from a, uh, basically a drug overdose and, and I did save his life, uh, I was good, still am good at what, what I do, but he started off with marijuana and then went on to obviously other drugs. So I have a personal story to it and I have a little bit of knowledge uh, because I know what my, my family went through. And I've seen what drugs have done to people's lives. They've ruined lives. Now what happens with the younger kids? I mean, if there's that much access, are the parents going to smoke marijuana in front of their kids? Is it going to be part of society where kids see their parents drinking alcohol in the home? So I, it's just, it's, I don't think, and I don't understand why the federal government is just sitting there with their thumb in their ear because it's illegally on a federal level. And that's another thing, right. too. Right, you have to buy cash because you can't use credit cards because the federal government doesn't allow the transaction. Correct. Um, does your personal, and the story of your brother is, is, is compelling, you've told me before, mm -hmm. but your personal experience, while I'm sure it's legitimate to advise your, pol your, your political, electoral, and, and fiduciary responsibility, are you weighing too heavy? On that experience, no. are, are, you, are you able to compartmentalize? No, I, I, I mean I can I can separate it, but I can speak from a position of strength, as they say, because I know what it's done to families, and I know, and as I said before, I've spoken to uh, many counselors, and they're very concerned because they say it's a gateway drug for, for for some people. Some people just can't control, obviously, whether they they they're out, become alcoholics or drug addicts, obviously, and we have to help those people. But this doesn't help if we're trying to really reduce the size of our opioid crisis and the people that are dying, Rhode Islanders that are dying. Thank God for Narcan. I gave Narcan, by the way, in 87 to my brother. It's a drug that works. But if we're trying to help people and now you're legalizing one drug, it's like being half pregnant. You're legalizing one drug, but you're trying to curtail the opioid crisis. You know, I'm not an expert on, on, on as, the, as the drug counselors are, but many drug counselors you speak to, they'll tell you it's, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, it's a, it's a gateway drug. Will the Conference of Mayors formally fight this? Absolutely. I, I think we're going to have a meeting in, uh, I believe, sometime next week with all the mayors. We're meeting in, uh, in, uh, in uh, um, Lincoln, uh, the town of Lincoln. Uh, you know, the group of mayors, managers, and town administrators, which was started by uh, Lieutenant Governor McKee, myself, Joe Allman, Mail and Body, it's, it's kind of uh, proliferated into many, many mayors. So we're going to meet and speak about it. Also, as a member of the League of Cities and Towns, I've uh, expressed my opposition, and, and I've seen a lot of my colleagues kind of despite shake their a, Despite a 3% take, which is what's proposed, that it would help your uh, rateable base? But, the, but how much is that going to bring in? Is it worth it, you know, 3%, is it worth it to, to, to have, you know, people smoke marijuana, lead to other drugs? Uh, I don't know what it's going to do. I, I don't think it's a good, you know, my business model in Johnston is we, we've had about a billion, 300 million in new business. Quite frankly, I don't want that kind of business in Johnson, and I understand with this legislation we can opt out. And speaking with some of the council members informally, you know, separately, I think uh, I'm in favor of opting out, and hopefully they're going to be the same way. Hmm. All right. Uh, there are other pressing issues in Johnston, one specific one that this guy just can't seem to figure out. <laughs> we'll be right back. Resisted it for four years because, in my view, it's always been better to um, get it right than to be first. And I spent an awful lot of time talking to the governor of Colorado in particular. And the way we're doing it, uh, I feel good about. So that's Governor Armando on Newsmakers. Uh, you've been 
pretty bullish on her and, and supportive of her. Big time supporter, time. Of course, yes. Um, so <clears throat> you're going to take the conference of mayors and go up against the governor on this? Yeah, idea. I mean, I, I think the governor would respect us. We're, we're, you know, we're allowed to express our opinion on what's best for our constituents yes, and what's best are. for our city and town. So. I don't, it's, it's, it's business with me. I mean, I don't say, it's not personal with the governor. In her budget, she had a lot of great ideas that, we, that I agree to, um, and a lot of ideas I don't agree to. Speaking of the word governor, put an LT in front of it. Uh, I, this, this got by me, but reportedly in your inaugural address, for what is it, your 133rd term as mayor of Johnston? <laughs> you, my last term. You suggested that uh, since Mr. Regenberg, who ran against Mr. McKee, says he might run again for that position. Which is a scary thought. That you would run against him. Were you joking? Uh, well, there's truth in jest. And uh, I said that I'd have to come out of retirement if Mr. Regenberg was the only candidate. You and Lombardi kill his name. and It's Regenberg. Okay. Both you and, do you do it? Per, do you do it on purpose? Lombardi's worse. <laughs> I mean, Lombardi's got like four different versions. Anyway, he, poor guy. He, uh, quite frankly, uh, with his policies, he would be very dangerous for the state. And I can tell you, if he runs, I will work whether I run against him, or I support someone that's going to run against him. I will work vigorously to make sure he's not the lieutenant governor. So this is interesting. This is this is the the economic conservative base of the Democratic Party, you know, fighting the progressive base. It's really interesting. But the biggest problem that you have, forget your reelectability to, to state office. If you can't catch the turkey, you're all done. You can't, how long has this turkey been running around town? Too long. He's getting uh, he's getting fed. He's getting fatter. And by the way, obviously, so are my animal control officers because they can't seem to catch him. So um, that, that's, that's been, he's, been, he's, made national, he's made international news uh, with the Guardian newspaper. I interviewed with a Canadian television station a couple of months ago. So he's more famous than... How uh, many months you've been chasing this thing? Uh, about six months. So since, since, last, since last July. I don't understand the nature of this particular turkey. I have like 18 of them that come through my backyard every other day. You want another one? But it. what is it about this one? That, that, he, he, that, what is it? He, he has superpower? What is it? He's, honestly, they're, they're smarter than I thought. He sees the animal control officer's vehicle and actually r either runs down the middle of Atwood Avenue or flies off. Um, they've made several. You think the turkey recognizes the animal control officer's absolutely truck? Absolutely, it's scary. It's scary. And he, what, what he does is he stops traffic. He pecks at vehicles. And my concern is that. Uh, the, the, the kind side of me is concerned. He's going to get hit by a car, and I want to see a child see that. Uh, and, or he's going to cause an accident. So he's been a menace. He's moved down a little bit from the town hall. And um, it, it, it's getting to the point where I might have to put on uh, my a net and go after him myself, seeing my animal control. Oh, I don't people. know. I saw one picture in the paper you were at, where you were flinching pretty hard over this yeah. tough guy. Well, so as I I'm said, not so sure. Well, as I said to Mayor Lombardi, he said, you, you look like you're afraid. I said, well, he was really bigger than you, Mayor. So. <laughs> <laughs> the maze, my friend, I can say that. We are very dear friends. All right. Keep us updated on that most important issue. Thank you for your perspective. You. We'll be in touch on the marijuana thing. Final word we can back. So Palacino whacked his animal control officers, took a completely unnecessary whack at the mayor of North Providence, you know, portends to be a tough guy. Had, you know, we don't have the capacity to just pull the picture up right away, but we'll find it. The one where he's like this, you know, so he doesn't have to catch the turkey as the turkey's like <laughs> in front of him. You know what? <clears throat> Goes around, comes around. Uh, interesting conversation on the marijuana thing. We'll follow up next week, no doubt. All right, see you on the Radio 3 on WPRO tomorrow. I'm back here tomorrow night. Thanks.